Very good. Looks like he's gonna walk up the hill without you. Yeah. Wow, man. Hmm. Wow, this is some. And th these are other ones, huh? Those are just uh, ore samples and things like that. Or something? Or? Yeah. That's how they found this, isn't it? Yeah. What's that? Miners looking for silver. Yeah, we're in the Mojave Basin, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this is, site here is in the Mojave Basin here. The Mojave Desert. Okay. Just showing the vol volcanic petrified palm wood. Mm -hmm. A camel tooth. Prehistoric yep. from a prehistoric camel. Yeah, it's a place to see camel. It's probably about 15,000 years old. Hmm, man. The examples in the case here are fiberglass reproductions of the original tools and the originals are in the San Bernardino County Museum in Redlands. Now our tools have been controversial here because most archaeologists in the past and some today don't think a tool making man got here before 12,000 years ago. And we've been dating tools well beyond that. Now the interesting thing is is the 12,000 is no longer an arguable point because the evidence they're finding on the coast of Alaska indicates that humans have been coming here for 40,000 years. And Dr. Goodyear has a site in South Carolina that he's getting dates of 50,000 on. So there's a lot of evidence indicating humans have been here a whole lot longer than 12,000. Our site was discovered in the 1940s when they were doing surface surveys down here on the Mojave River Channel. At that time, we were looking for later cultures like the Chumwevi, the Mojave, the Shoshone, the Paiute, and the Kawea. The Mojave River Channel was a portion of a trade route that went to the Pacific Ocean, and it was a viable water source up until about the 1920s. And one evening, Ritter Sales came up to the Bentonite Mine, and he picked up some core stones like those down there in the bottom shelf. He took those cores down to Dee Simpson, who's the lady in the picture up here. She was head of archaeology for the San Bernardino County Museum for about 35 years. And she looked at the material and decided to expand the search area up into the hills. And they found a lot of evidence here indicating there was someone here making tools. And it was pretty clear they predated the modern Indians. Of course, when Dee tried to get a dig site going, the 12,000-year uh, thing kept coming up. So finally, in 1958, Dee took some examples of material from the site. Here's some of which are right here. To a seminar in Europe. And while she was there, she got word that Dr. Lewis Leakey was going to be in London. Now, Dr. Leakey and his wife Mary were quite famous for their work in Olduvai Gorge in Africa, where they had pushed humans back almost two million years. And Dr. Leakey was one of the few anthropologists in those days that did believe humans had been dispersed through the world a lot earlier than what everyone else thought. And of course, we're finding evidence now indicating Dr. Leakey was pretty much correct. Anyway, he flew to London, was granted a five-minute interview with the doctor by one of his aides. Of course, when Dr. Leakey saw the material she had, the interview lasted several hours. And Dee came back to the United States with instructions to get ready to do a dig site. In 19, he visited the site for the first time. And we went up the hill here, he did a little digging in one of the miners' cuts, did quite an extensive field survey and finally put down four markers and said dig here and he went to the National Geographics and got his funding. We started digging on November 1st of 1964. We are still actively working the site so we probably have the oldest active dig site in the United States. Now Dr. Leakey directed our site here until his demise in 1972 and of course I was quite fortunate to be here and work with Dr. Leakey while he directed. 
On his demise, Dee Simpson took over. She directed till 2000. Our present director is Dee Schroth, the lady right up there in that picture. And <clears throat> that just about sums up Morel. When these people lived here, it was quite a lot different. It rained 20 inches or more. The area had pinyon pines, oak trees, junipers, sages, grain grasses, and herbs. The valley down here was a lake that covered about 200 square miles. The outlines there on the satellite image. The lake was rich in aquatic life, had a huge avian population, and the area was rich in Rancho La Brea type animals. Very high levels of food sources here. Now what makes the edge of the lake where a dig site is there attractive is that tool making material is abundant. So these people basically had a pretty decent place to live here. They had ample food and water supplies and they had tool making material. Now the tool making material of choice are the calcetines that are prevalent in the area and I have those examples right over here. Starting with the petrified wood on the left, the jaspers and agates on that side. The material is a silicon dioxide compound and it's about a seven and a half hardness on the Mohs scale. Mohs scale going from one to ten, one's cal, ten's a diamond. So this material is quite hard. Now we identify a human struck flake from this material because it has a well-defined striking platform which would have been would have been struck in this fashion with another stone. That develops a bulb of percussion and a compression wave that travels through the stone. And of course, as you can see, even the flakes come up with sharp edges on them, which I've dulled because I had too many people doing that to see if it was sharp. Now, unfortunately, our tool making material is also a gemstone called agate. And this area has been a gem hunter's area since about the 1920s. The examples in the frame are materials from this very area. Those were collected, cut, and polished by my mother and I in the 1940s. The red jaspers, the chalcedony or agate material, and this one and this one are what Mule Canyon is famous for, which is petrified palm trees. Hmm. Now, at the present time, we're doing rather extensive geological studies and new dating procedures because evidence that was published by Dr. Stephanie Dudash and Dr. Dave Miller of the USGS indicates that this area is seismically far more active than we originally thought. And of course seismic activity tends to jumble up the landscape and of course our goal is to put the geological calendar in some semblance of order. Now our dig season here is October through May and the diggers come up on the first full weekend of the month. And of course we invite anyone that would like to come up and join us and dig in the dig pits or go on field surveys or what other, other, other activities might be going on on the dig weekend. And of course all the digging here is done by volunteers because we're not supported by any governmental agencies or universities per se. And of course I support the site with what I get out of uh, uh, sales out of my store here and what I get in donations. And of course on dig weekend we have a guest speaker of some note on Saturday evening. And of course you can camp here on the grounds for free. And for a modest donation of five bucks you can eat dinner with us over here and breakfast on Sunday morning. <laughs>